Hello there! Have you ever wondered if there was a super quick and easy way to be sure you always have the right exposure when filming or taking photos? Well, there is. I'm talking about false colors and you might know it from your field monitor or your external recorder when filming. On my monitor it looks like this and my skin is exposed right if I'm sort of greenish towards aqua in the shadows. You can easily make LUTs to simulate this in Photoshop and you can even make them much more precise than these rainbow versions. But let's start with remaking what my field monitor does. As you can see, we have this rainbow scale down here, going from blue over green towards yellow and red. First step is to add a gradient map adjustment layer. If we click the gradient bar, we can edit the colors to match the same false colors. We simply click just under the bar to change the color for that position and double click the little square to edit the color. This one we make aqua and the one on the left hand side we make blue, then a green one and press OK and yellow and all the way on the right hand side a red one. Now we only need to reposition the colors more evenly, like that, and press OK. If we add a levels or curves adjustment layer just above our image, it's easy to see how adjusting the brightness affects the colors dramatically. But we didn't approach this false color layer in a precise or scientific way. We can do it much better. If skin tones are what matters most, we need to know what brightness value skin has and target a certain color for that value. Caucasian skin like mine is around 70% in brightness. Well, it varies a little, but let's work with 17 in this example. We can find the gradient map down here as a name or as an icon in the adjustment palette. Let's click on it and click on the gradient bar to open the gradient editor. First, let's add some more colors than in the previous example. That way we have a much higher precision. I just add random colors in this example, but you can find commonly used color charts on the web and target these colors for the respective positions. Let's choose green for the typical Caucasian skin tone and move green to location 70, which means a brightness value of 70%. And we can distribute the colors more tightly around the 70% brightness level. In this particular case, we don't need high precision among the darkest values. Now we can rely on this check layer when pale skinned humans like me are the subject and if green is the prominent color, we are on the right track. It's okay we have a little yellow and brown in the absolute highlights as long as we don't see any red. But of course, in real life we need distinct colors for each skin type. If we search for skin color, IRE, we can find much more precise values for all human skin colors. It's pretty easy to export these false color gradients as a lot if we want to use them in Premiere Pro or any other filmmaking software. And I will show how to do this in the end of this tutorial. But first we have to make an even more precise false color check layer. There's no place we need such super accurate exposure as when reproducing fine art. Here we have an amazing painting by one of my all-time favorite artists, Conrad Ross. I have taken four different photos with a white balance card placed in each corner and one without. I only had one card, so therefore all the exposures. These images we combine as one. We go to Edit, Scripts, Load Files into Stack and click Add Open Files. We don't need to align this time because it's not important in this case. Then we add a black mask on the top layer by pressing Alt or Option when adding the mask. And paint back the white balance card with a white brush in the mask. Now let's merge the two layers by pressing Command E and we can repeat the process on the next layer to reveal one more white balance card. Merge again, another black mask, well, this time we actually need a white mask, so we don't have to paint over more than one card. 
and merge. Now we have a layer with the white balance card and one with just the painting. The white balance card has a known value of 83% and we will make a false color layer that will highlight exactly that. When we make our gradient this time, we make it black on the left hand side and white on the right hand side. This way we get a black and white version of our photo and now we choose a bright color to represent our gray card. I choose a vibrant red and place it exactly where the brightness of our card should be. That means location 83. Then we make another color square on both sides of the red one and place them only 2% from our target color. That means location 81 and a brightness of 81% and 0% in saturation. And on the other side, the same location 85 and brightness 85 and saturation is already zero. Now we can save this gradient for later use. Let's call it gray card and press new and OK. If we delete our gradient layer, we can easily find it again in the gradient editor. Now we have a narrow band gradient where a red color will show when we have a very precise exposure. And furthermore, it will reveal if we have any deviation in exposure as well. So let's try it out on the painting. We start by adding a curves layer just above the painting. And let's adjust so we see as much red color as possible. Now it's pretty easy to see that the two down here are underexposed. That's hardly visible with our naked eye. We add another curves layer and make a gradient in the mask. A normal black and white gradient, of course. So we can adjust the brightness gradually. The adjustment will mainly affect the two cards below. Now our image is evenly lit and we can turn off our gradient shake layer and turn off the gray card layer. We have a perfectly exposed painting. Time to make our own lot or color lookup table. This time let's make one meant for an 18% gray card. I know this is actually a little bit confusing because an 18% gray card is actually 15% in Photoshop terminology. That's because 18% card has a color of 50% gray, but is reflecting 18% of the light striking the card. If you want to know more about gray cards and how to use them in Photoshop, please check out this tutorial. One thing we always need when creating LUTs is a background layer, otherwise the export won't work. So we can basically use one of our already open images as a background. I have made this gradient highlighting 15% in advance, so we don't have to go through the process one more time. We go to File, Export, Color Lookup Tables, we choose Quality, 64 high and tick cube as our format and save it as 15%.lot. For now, I just save it on my desktop. And let's try it out on a new image. Let's open Kodak 18% and go to color lookup in the layers panel or in the adjustment panel where we find this little checkered icon. We click on load 3D LUT twice and navigate to our .cube file. And now we have applied a LUT we can use exactly as before. As you can see, the LUT is telling us exactly where we have 15% brightness and it's easy to see the direction of light. We can compensate with the diagonal gradient in the mask. And again, the gray card is illuminated much more evenly. You might think she's a little bit darker in the face than before. 
That's because this check layer is so precise that only her fingertips and the card are 100% correctly exposed. Because the flash is just in front of her. Let's try a homemade lot in Premiere as well. Here we have a clip in the timeline and we need a separate adjustment layer for the LUT to be able to adjust brightness without affecting the LUT. And with the adjustment layer active, we navigate to our rainbow LUT. Now it's easy to replicate the behavior of my field monitor when adjusting the brightness. I hope you found this tutorial inspirational. Only our imagination will set the limit for using check layers for different purposes. Thank you and goodbye. Well, you could of course continue watching one of my other videos.